Okay, hello and welcome to another video. Uh, I can't remember who uh, asked if I wouldn't mind going through the specimen papers, but no, I don't mind. Uh, I'm always happy to get a few more map papers up there. These I don't have to do in the future. Um, I mainly run this channel really for students at my school who are interested in doing map and step. And so once they're done, though, of course, up on the channel, they're done for the future. So yeah, very happy to do them. If anybody wants to suggest any other papers that they'd like me to do, please suggest and I'll have a go because uh, anything from map, step, Tamura. AEA, any of the other extension papers I'm up for. The ones which I'm not very good at, <laughs> I'll hold my hand up to that, is the BMO round two. <laughs> Have a look at that, honestly, if you're interested in uh, doing maths at top unis. BMO round two. Wow, that's hard. Okay, so we've got to find the area of the region bounded by these two curves. This is a typical A-level question, really. And I guess they've started, you know, giving out a settler on these specimen papers just to settle people into like you know what they're doing okay so we're trying to find this area this is a typical integration problem uh, we need to find these two values and then integrate top curve minus bottom curve essentially so let's first solve where x squared equals x plus 2 so you get x squared minus x minus 2 equals 0 so x minus 2 x plus 1 equals 0 and so x is 2 or minus 1 and that seems to agree with my diagram, it looks about right, that's what I mean. So I need to integrate from 2 to minus 1 the top curve, which is x plus 2, minus the bottom curve, which is x squared dx. That gives me x squared over 2 plus 2x minus x cubed over 3 between 2 and minus 1. Yeah, I hope you're familiar with, uh, I call it integrate top minus bottom. Yeah, whenever you're finding a trapped area, the limits being where they intersect. Uh, I hope you're familiar with that. It's a really useful one to know. So, yeah, learn it. Uh, 2 squared, 4 over 2. Remember, you've only got your brain to do this. No calculating this. Stop. Put the calculator down. You know, it's, it's, it's too late for the calc. Okay, what half minus 2 uh, plus a third. Okay, so what have we got here? Um, I like to do the integers alone first and then do the... Minus 8 thirds minus a third is minus 9 thirds, which is minus 3. Add on the 6, you've got 9. Add on the 2, you've got 11. But then we're going to be, oh, sorry, yeah, and that's, oh, yeah, let's be careful here. That's <laughs> 6 minus 8 thirds, I was rushing it. Minus a half plus 2, uh, and then minus a third. Yeah, and then just, don't need that last bucket. Okay, so what have we got here? We're going to have minus 8 thirds minus third, that's minus 9 thirds, which is minus 3. But we've got 6 plus 2, which is 8, minus 3, which is 5. Take away half, you've got 9 over 2, so that's 9 over 2. Yeah, obviously you'd check that carefully. I don't think anybody will be looking at my video to watch that one, because that one is really kind of standard. Uh, but if you are good, you know, that's fine. This, by the way, is a paper which is perfect for starting mat on, yeah? Practicing, practice mat with the two specimens is slightly easier, but that's why they're good practice to, you know, kind of get you going. Okay, right, the smallest value of the function in the range from 0 to 2. Now, you might think simply what it's going to be when x is 0. Maybe, but maybe not. What we really need to know is, is the cubic curve going down or up or a bit down and a bit up there? So it would be nice to find out where the turning points are first because, you know, just from this little sketch, can you see from 0 to 2 here, yeah, um, if you want the smallest value, sure, it's going to occur at 0, but if instead it looks something like that from 0 to 2 then the smallest value suddenly occurs near a 2 in other words the turning points are crucial here finding out where they occur now f dash of x is 6x squared minus 18x plus 12 and if that equals 0 then we've got x squared minus uh, we're dividing by 6 aren't we 3x plus 2 so x minus 2 x minus 1 and something plus 1 minus 1 and so x is 2 or 1. Now, what that's telling me is we have turning points at x equals 1 and x equals 2. Now, when you plug in x is 0 here, you can see you're at 3. Yeah. And then we're going to get a turning point when x is 1 here. And when x is 1, we're at 2 minus 9 minus 7. Plus 12 is 5. Plus 3 is 8. And then we're going down at 2, where we're going to get a minimum. 
and sure enough at two hopefully will be lower than three well, it won't necessarily be lower than three though. let's have a look uh, plug in two two cubed uh, times two we're at 16 minus 36 is minus 20 plus 24 is 4 plus 3 is 7 so there we go yeah it actually looks something like this yeah and the answer is 3 so if you just plugged in x is 0 you would have got 3 um, but <laughs> it's a really naive approach it's going to be 3 there though but be careful on that you know you can't be too naive it could have the turning points could have affected it it's slightly annoying that if you just chosen to ignore that fact you would have got the right answer <laughs> Okay, 3x plus 4y equals 50. Well, that kind of looks something like this. Yeah, um, and what's more, the gradient of that um, is going to be minus 3 quarters. Yeah, and 3, 4 is, let's like, say, here. Right, okay, so it would be useful if we could find this point and then we'll just have we get from there to there, we'll apply it again to get from there to there, and we'll have reflected the point. Now, the gradient of the gradient that times minus three quarters, the gradient of this sign is four thirds, because that should be at a right angle if it's going to be reflected perpendicularly in the line, which it should be. And so we've got, let's just work out the equation of this line y equals four thirds x plus c, but let's just plug in y is 4 when x is 3 so that's just the equation of the line y equals 4 thirds x we can see that c is 0 and so if I want to now find out whether that hits the line 3x plus 4 y equals 50 I'll plug it in so 3x plus 4 16 over 3 x equals 50 um, and therefore let's make this like 9x plus 16x over 3 so 25x over 3 equals 50 and so you're going to get 75 over 25 um, so 150 over 25 x is going to be 6 and when x is 6 on this line um, we're going to get 18 there take it away you're going to get 32 y is 8 yeah so that is actually the point x is 6 y is 8 it tells me I've drawn that on the wrong side of the line it's kind of funny Funny what you do when you're rushing. I'm just kind of like rushing through these early ones because I find the first five questions are normally pretty straightforward. So that's three four, that's six eight. Now how do we get from three to four to six to eight? We add three to the x and four to the y. So just do that again to six eight. Add three to the x, four to the y, and you'll find out that's nine twelve because each time makes it you're increasing by a vector of three four three four. There we go. Uh, there's some, there may be some easier ways of doing that. Um, there really might be, so it's a really dodgy vector I've drawn there. But I hope you can see the point I'm making here. Basically, if we can see how to get from there to there, then we can see how to get from there to there. There probably are easier ways. You could use a formula, for example. Uh, there are formulas for finding uh, reflected images of points in lines and planes. <laughs> we'll do that soon. Okay, the equation has no roots 1, root 2, root 3, roots. Well, Let's have a look at this, what we got. Um, factor theorem, I guess. Um, one isn't going to work, but does two? Two cubed minus three, 30 times two squared plus 216 minus 104. What does that come to? Eight. And I, I rush for these because you don't have to show you working, do you? Minus 20 plus 216 minus 104. Okay. I think that's 224 minus 224 equals 0. Great, I know x minus 2 is a factor. Right, you do not want to faff about with polynomial division as far as I'm concerned. I think it's the slowest way of doing division to do this. I personally just think, what do I need times x minus 2 by to get that? Well, I need an x squared to make the x cubed. That gives me a minus 2x squared. But I want minus 30x squared, so that must be minus 28x squared, and so that must be minus 28x. This is just long division, but in the, but quickly. Uh, plus 56x, but I want 108x, so I need another, what is that, 52x. So that must be 52. And at the end, the 52 times minus 2, which is minus 104, shows that I've done it right, because I end up with every term there. And so this is the same as x minus 2 
followed by x squared minus 28x plus 50 so this is factorizing really nicely and then factorize it again minus 2 and minus 26 and so that's got a repeated root by the look of it and so the answer is D okay E right uh, the fact that 6 times 7 is 42 is a counter example to which of the following statements okay the product of any two odd integers is odd okay a claim that basically when you apply multiply two odd integers together you get odd well this isn't two odd integers multiplied together so it's no counter example to that if it was like 7 times 9 equals 42 it would be but it's not b if the product of two integers is not a multiple of 4 ah, this isn't a multiple of 4 then the integers are not consecutive well these are consecutive so it's b that must be your counter example you can read for the others and check that it's not that if the product of two integers is a multiple of 4 42 isn't a multiple of 4 so this isn't going to help us with that claim uh, it's not going to be a counter example to it because here the product of two integers is not a multiple of 4 and any even integer can be written as a product of two even integers well here's interesting you might get confused with d because if you've got an even integer right firstly an even integer can't be written always as a product of two even integers let me give you a quick example um uh sorry let's take something like uh 28 yeah can we or sorry let's, let's take uh something like 14 yeah can we write that as a product of two even integers? No, because it's two times a prime number. Yes, yeah, so this claim is definitely false. So that's not going to be a counterexample to it. Um, but I can see how you might get muddled up with that. But remember, like what what you're showing here is that it can be written as a pro product of two consecutive integers here. It's got nothing to do with uh, just showing you that it can be written. This isn't to say, yeah, can 42 be written uh, as product of two consecutive uh, as a product of two even integers, yeah, yeah, it can actually, can't it? Because you could do, uh, let me think, uh, twelve. To, no, uh, yeah, I mean this this statement is false, and that's why this isn't going to be a counterexample to it. So it's B. Okay, hope you found that useful. I'll work on the next five now. Bye bye.